Hello. <laughs> um, how's it going? Uh, hello? Something on our light? <sighs> My name is Kari, and, um... Today is a really interesting, odd day. I'm on what I think is the beginning of my spiritual journey. Even though know, I've been since I was a kid, uh, I've had connections. Connection to, I guess, I, when I was a kid, I, I, I would get, I'd walk around outside and I would look at stuff, like trees and um, the sky and. Houses and I was I can't explain to you the constant sense of beauty that I've gotten from that I've noticed or seen experienced being in this world and um, it was overwhelming and I would cry a lot because of it and I had this feeling like what do I do with it? <laughs> what do I do with all of it? And this other feeling like that I wanted to just become a part of it, that I knew that um, there was some greater mesh or something beyond all of this that I was observing, and that somehow I could be a part of that. But I didn't know how, and it made me cry. Um, I don't know. I always experienced stuff like when I would, I would have very sensitive um, olfactory sense. All my everything was very sensitive. I would smell things. Uh, I would usually have very vivid memories of places, people, things that never happened, things that would happen. Um, really lovely things. And. No, I. <laughs> it's really odd to think about, I guess. Um, my experience in this world. <sighs> I've always been trying things ever since I was young to like change my perception and like alter the world around me inside my own mind, um, just the appearance of things, to visualize things that weren't there, and um, stuff like that it was fun. I called it brain magic at the time, and it's like one thing that, I, excuse me, I <laughs> need a massage, but <laughs> Um, there's one thing I'd do where um, I would go outside and I don't know. It just, it just, I can't remember, I don't know the impetus, but it struck me that if something was uncomfortable to me, that there's no reason why I should continue to feel it. That there was always a way to change these things. So, like if I were cold, I would be going outside. We'd, do a fire drill, and I tell my friends, hey guys, if you start to think of the cold as London on a rainy day, then you won't think it's cold anymore. Your brain will associate the cold with London on a rainy day. And you can start to kind of change the way that, you, the, the way that sensations um, affect you and how you process them and stuff. And, um, you know, that happened. Other things do. Um, it's kind of since we uh, it's a connection of the senses to the different associative uh, kind of templates almost. So that I would feel 
feel something different than what I was feeling. Um, you know, I've kind of always been questioning like the human body and um, trying to acclimate as much as possible. I've had a lot of pain in my life, I guess. I mean, maybe not relative to a lot of people, but I used to suffer from like sprained ankles like once every like couple months when I was like really young. So I had to like really get over like the pain, intense pain of the sprained ankle. And um, I dislocated my knee, which sucked. I had to deal with that. And then, um, I don't know, when I was a kid, uh, I was in an accident. Uh, I was getting ready for school one day and my mom, um, she used a iron to iron my clothes on my body because we were in a rush. And she pressed this steam button and as you can imagine, I uh, took my skin flaked off, um, or seared off, I don't know. It ended up flaking, eventually, but I got a pretty bad burn. That's only, that's probably still there, it's only shrunk because I've grown since I was, I don't know, eight. Um, right in the center of my chest. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, I've been in skateboard accidents and I learned to love pain at some point in high school. I really thought, you know, you re re rethink your sensations, rethink what you're doing and kind of get behind it and get behind, like, what exactly is this? And I realized somehow that people do all sorts of mental alchemy for things. And I wasn't necessarily healthy about it because I just was enamored with the idea, I guess, of diverting pain or suffering or, um, you know, making into something different. So, like, I would take Michael Jackson as a example, and when I learned that, um, he, uh, well, there was a theory that part of the reason why he turned out the way he did, not, not to cast judgment on Michael Jackson, or say that he turned out to be anyone other than, you know, the person that he was, in, in one way or the other. Um, he uh, had, I, I, I guess I learned from his character that in this theory of him becoming a, a very sexual individual, that he learned to take the pain of his childhood and turn it into a sexual thing. Um, or this, yeah, so I, or maybe it wasn't necessarily always a sexual thing, but somehow he transmuted the pain of his childhood into something that grew, that was nonetheless abnormal, but was still different than what it was. So, um, huh, I'm a, what's up? So, sorry. Um, so, I, from that, I kind of started to think about all the pain in my life, and I was like, I can turn this into something sexy. I started being attracted to my pain and like masturbating to it and I'm like and if something hurt me I would masturbate by the porn not just on my own of course and um, you know you just start to build these kind of uh, associations you start to build these patterns these behaviors behavior patterns these um thought patterns these ways of Dealing with what ails you, what makes you sad, uh, and it kind of turns into this thing that you later have to rip apart and say, what the fuck did I do here? Excuse my language. But, um, then, you know, there's other stuff um, that I kind of figured out, quote unquote, <laughs> and thought were almost hacks to... I guess, in a way, I didn't think that necessarily, but I saw that kind of like that. Um, I don't know, I've just been kind of tinkering with um, my mind, um, my responses to stimuli, stimuli for a long time. <sighs> I'm getting tired of talking like this. <laughs> um, Anyway, so 
As that relates now, it doesn't. I think I just wanted to say that as a back story because I don't really, you know. Um, part of it is a long back story, believe it or not, and this is a pretty shallow probing, but, so, you know, this other aspect is that I grew up in a family that was kind of, uh, fragmented spiritually. Um, my father was a Muslim, and he was a Christian, and then he was a Baha'i, and he went through, uh, some very, um, personal changes that led him from each religion. Uh, generally, he's more of a seeker of God um, than he is anything else religious or otherwise. He's always been after the truth of God, I think, and the heart of God, and knowing God is one. Um, and has this very kind of uh, inclusive, uh, uh, this idea, the, he holds the idea that religions all have the same message. And um, he is, in the, as a Baha'i, he's, he's sort of set more into Christianity now, but as a Baha'i, part of his big mission, and even as a Christian, part of his big mission was to bring together all faiths to have uh, conversations and to share, you know, their, um, to show the intersections and to, to kind of um, enjoy, and not just enjoy, but to praise and worship, to approach God um, with using uh, all the methods that have been taught to us um, by you know, the great prophets that came before um, one another succession to bring a different message, part of um, the message, and this is, I share some of this, obviously, but, you know, this is kind of describing my father's beliefs and where he comes from, um, and his mother is a woman who's grown up to become a yogi, um, in the Self-Realization Fellowship, um, I don't know how to call it, a uh, religion practice system, um, and she's very much a woman who is also very worldly and who listens to people, and has, she's a healer, um, almost like my father is, he's an energy healer that both, he's a Reiki master, I believe, or a Reiki, he at least, um, is that a second infusion, I don't remember what he's called, a Reiki, um, second attunement, and she is a Reiki master, and she's been practicing for a long time. Um, and she grew up, when I grew up, my grandma would occasionally take me to, um, she was always a present voice in my life. Um, she was very outspoken, and she very staunchly, uh, wants to bring, she, she sees the need for meditation, she sees the need for centering, she sees the need for all these different things, um, inside of, uh, her family. Uh, I think, and then as society as a whole, and then black people as a subset. Um, and that's kind of what she is looking to do, is to promote um, inner peace. You know, she, she always, uh, she always, she always, as kind of her introduction to meditation, which happens often, she introduces it very often because it's a topic that she, that is very, um, that I don't think needs, that I don't think can stop being introduced some point, especially because I'm dense, and, um, because I, I don't really communicate that, you know, um, more so because I don't think I get it yet, I think I'm starting to, but, you know, just as a grandson, grandma, grandmother relationship, <laughs> um, and she often, um, talks about how when she was a young, she was but a, a young child, she would always think about a lot of stuff. She would always have all these thoughts, and um, her her mother, the late uh, Sid Bear, uh, Gussie Sid, uh, Gu Gussie, I don't know her full first name, Gussie um, Sid Berry, um, Grandma Sid Berry, she would, who died at the age of 100, and not 101, but I think it was 100, which was this, this past year. Um, she was a really wonderful person. I didn't really know. I knew her vaguely um, while she was alive, but um, it was always a very strange experience being around family in a cramped apartment in uh, Eastman, 
Manhattan, remember what part of Manhattan. It's always like, it's like kind of like having a bag over your head and being kidnapped and taken to a place and you have no idea how you got there, you have no idea where the heck you are. Um, you just kind of are there and things are happening. Thankfully no one tortured me, but so we lived in a small house. It was always food cooking. Um, my aunt Debbie who died of uh, recently. Um, rest her soul. She was, for what I knew of her, she was very. Uh, I think she was funny. She was very thin. Um, she smoked a lot. These are the details I remember about my aunt Debbie. Uh, she was a nice person, I think. She had glasses. Do I remember her hair color? I might if I sat and meditated for long enough, but um, she it, she was my grandma said my grandma Gussie um, would tell her to put so go back to the story about my grandmother. She would tell my grandmother to put and she couldn't when she was thinking too much. She would tell her put a pillow uh, just scream or whenever whenever you're uh, you feeling that way or you feel overwhelmed by your thoughts just scream. My grandma would go down the street and she just said screaming. And my grandma Gussie, one time I think she just screamed around her. My grandma Gussie was like, I didn't mean really. I mean, like, go get a pillow or something and scream into the pillow. But the important for of that story is just to kind of preface my grandmother's life. And I, and I think when she says it, it's kind of the preface, the impetus for um, really getting into the, or sorry, the, the kind of the beginning um, of her journey towards finding a way to still her mind thoughts and it came up to the point where she was given by Aunt Debbie the um, autobiography of a yogi and told to read it or not told I don't think it was a command it was more of a loving gesture of uh, a playful divine soul so she gave it to her and um, my grandma got into it and I think that became that I don't remember how old she was I think I'm not sure. I don't know her timeline. I know she got married young. Um, like at 18. And yeah, I know she's done a lot of stuff in her life. She's 76 now, I think, 77. She does not look it. She does not act it. She is the most alive human being that you will meet. I promise you. She writes poetry. I just She just sent me a link to her poetry blog, or her poetry posts on a website. She's published. She has like a little bio and stuff about narrowed down sin and all her accomplishments and where she's been. I'm like, ah, cool, Grandma. But, um, I haven't said as much because I don't know how, I don't know what to say. But, uh, um, she, uh, yeah, so she's, she's always been into meditation and on that, the path of seeking more than that, just health, wellness, um, mind, kind of towards love. Love is a very big thing in life. Anyway, so I think I'm kind of going on. It's almost 20 minutes. There's, there's no there's no order to this <laughs> at all. Um, I guess I'm just kind of talking. So maybe I'll make another video and keep continue my story or continue talking, whatever is happening.